Hi everybody, this week we're doing a two-year usage review on my Rikon 16-inch scroll saw. And also we're going to try to explain why these five scroll saws might be exactly the same. What? I bought a Rikon 16-inch scroll saw a couple years ago, but as a consumer, I really struggled to understand why scroll saws from five different brands looked exactly the same. So I'm going to dive into the features and performance of my Rikon after two years of usage, but I think we need to explain this brand design craziness first. Let's talk about the concept of private labeling. This is where a large manufacturer designs and creates products for other brands to sell under their own names. Kenmore appliances were never made by Kenmore. They were actually manufactured by Whirlpool, GE, and Frigidaire. Craftsman hand tools? Nope. They were all made by companies like New Britain, Iasco, Danaher, or Apex over the years. Fujigawa. I don't know that brand. It's, it really it's not brand. really Fujigawa, it's Sony Guts. Now let's get into the Raycon features. It sits on a cast iron base with an aluminum upper control arm and a 16 inch aluminum table. The blade tension knob is at the back of the saw on top. The cutting table adjusts to a 45 degree bevel and the power and speed controls are situated on the front of the saw. It also comes with a dust vacuum port in front for a small shop vac, a hold down foot on the table for your wood stock and an air pump to blow dust away from the cutting blade. Interestingly enough, those are the same exact features you'll find across all five scroll saws. You'll find, in fact, the same exact detailed design specifications for each machine as well. They're all 26 pounds with 1.2 amp motors, 3 quarter inch stroke, handling up to 2 inch stock, and variable speed controls up to 1650 strokes per minute. But this is what you do when you're a tool brand that doesn't make a particular type of tool. You find a reliable manufacturing partner with a good design and you pay for private labeling. The challenge for the consumer is to try and figure out if the tools are somehow different. Is one brand better than the other? Especially hard to discern the differences when this particular product design, the materials used, and the technical specifications are exactly the same. While I was not able to find the actual manufacturer of this scroll saw design, I believe that there are multiple tool brands selling the same saw. That means that there's an industry acceptance for this reliable design and they are all willing to sell the tool under their own brand. It's also unclear if that manufacturer does the final paint job, adds the colored plastic knobs and accessories, or if the brand does the final assembly and packaging themselves. So are there any real differences with the Rikon? Well, it's blue and I bought it from a retailer I trust. You'll find different pricing, warranties, and accessories with each brand as well, where the least cost options can be found at Harbor Freight, your local home center, or through Amazon. But I chose the Rikon because it's sold at Woodcraft, a national retailer for woodworking tools and supplies. If I have any issues, I can deal with my local store and not have to worry about shipping a 30-pound package back to anyone for repair. This one comes with a five-year warranty, the best offered by any of the brands, and it was packaged with some additional accessories too. All saws will come with a hold down foot to keep the stock on the table, but the Rikon also comes with a see-through blade guard for added protection, and it tends to help direct the dust down into the vacuum port too. Changing out the blade adapters is pretty easy, as they are all held down by a single Allen machine screw, though if you're going to use standard pin scroll saw blades, you'll never have to remove this assembly. With the adapter off, it's easy to show you how the pinned blade fits into the slot on the adapter. The Rikon also comes with a pinless blade adapter, allowing for the use of some extremely thin blades for highly detailed scroll work. Here's how the pinless adapter fits into the standard pinned blade cartridge. To change out a pinned blade, loosen the tension knob and put the pin blade in the carriage. Tighten until you can hear the tension ping.
Too loose and the blade pops out of the cartridge. Too tight and you break your blades. You'll figure it out with some experience. The Rikon also comes with a pretty bright work light to highlight the work on the table and provide a better view of the lines you're cutting. When doing any scroll work, I highly recommend securing the tool to a work table somehow. I've got mine attached to some MDF, which is clamped to my work table, though you can screw or bolt the saw to your workbench as well. Regardless of what scroll saw you buy, you'll need to secure it to a work surface because the vertical motion of the saw arm just makes the tool bounce, and you'll need it to be stable as you cut. Well, nothing really makes you jump back like the sound of a snapping saw blade, but with both ends attached to the tool, it isn't likely that pieces would come flying off. Still, you should always wear eye protection and a dust mask when working with this tool. Now here's the only accessory we added to the scroll saw. It's a universal blade adapter that secures both pinned and pinless scroll blades. The Rikon pinless adapter is too cumbersome to work with, and this adapter allows you to change blades by simply tightening a wing nut to secure either type of blade. And once the blade is secure on the top and bottom of the control arm, you tighten it down with the tension knob and put the cover plate back in place. All in all, it's pretty easy to change out scroll saw blades, which is nice because you're going to be breaking a few along the way. This tool is perfect for tight cuts like this gear where a bandsaw blade is simply too wide or where the wood piece is too small to safely hold or secure for a jigsaw. While this is not the most heavily used tool in our workshop, it is the only tool to use when you need to make narrow cuts or tight turns on a wood project. In fact, my son Matt uses it more than I do especially for wall art projects like this 3D display in walnut, maple, and mahogany. Over the past two years, we've used this scroll saw a lot, and the performance of the tool has been great. The Rikon will cost more than other brands listed in this video, but it does come with additional accessories that cheaper models just don't have. Let's do a breakdown. On the good side, the quality of the Rikon is pretty good. It was super easy to use and the five-year warranty with local service was what sold me. I thought the added accessories like the table lamp were good features and effective too. Not so great? I think the vacuum port doesn't actually accumulate the sawdust very well and the provided pinless adapter was hard to use and of course the comparative cost was high. Overall we really like this tool and after two years of usage it still gets four out of five thumbs. Hey everybody, thanks very much for watching our little channel and we hope you like and subscribe as well. Take care.